Hi folks, up at Yes Tomorrow. Uh, my name is Fred Bartels. I'm a 30 plus year educator in the area of information technology. Last year I took a gap year to transition to a new, less stressful career stage. One of my objectives during the gap year was to explore a long-standing interest in architecture and sustainable design. Esther Morrow's ecological design in the built environment program was an excellent vehicle to help me pursue that interest. The other courses I took to fulfill EDBE requirements were timber framing, taught me a lot about structures and the importance of measurement, accurate measurement and cuts, uh, solar design, learned lots about integrating both passive and active solar into designs. Uh, two courses that are quite similar in what they cover, hydrothermal engineering, managing moisture in the home, and super insulation for zero energy building. Both these courses cover building envelope issues related to moisture and insulation and how to do that right. But I learned a lot from both those courses. Um, took a, a week-long sustainable prefab course which was very interesting. We visited a number of uh, factories in the Estomaro area that produce prefab buildings and I think uh, if I end up building a retirement home uh, I will go the prefab route based upon what I learned on that, in that course. Uh, and finally, I took a course in Introduction to Alternative Building Materials, which was a great overview of all the, the, of the huge variety of, of building materials that are available these days. So those were, the, those were the other courses to fulfill my requirements for the certificate. Um, and then, of course, you have to do a practicum project, which is what this is about. Um, I knew from the start that my practicum pro that for my practicum project, I wanted to uh, work on some ideas related to organically curved roofs. I've been playing around with these ideas for years and used the practicum project to push them forward a bit. I think I'll be playing around with the ideas for many more years. So I view my practicum more as a distinct stage in the evolution of these ideas rather than the culmination of thinking about them. So with that introduction, let's get into my practicum project. So these are some items and some images related to uh, developing ideas related to curved roofs. Um, I'm not going to go through these in any detail. And, uh, well, a few things I'll point out. Um, this is this little clay model gives you a sense of what I'm aiming for in terms of des design. Uh, maybe. Um, this is a uh, a hub uh, for the triangular um, design I'm using. Uh, this. These are um, samples of paper mache that I've lots of different formulas. Um, all attempting to get a hard mache that I can use to smooth out the triangular uh, faces of the roof to get a nice curve. Um, I mentioned in the video, the opening video introduction, that uh, I knew from the beginning that I wanted to work on curved uh, roofs, but uh, this was my final project for the core class, and uh, the context in this case called for a more traditional building. And this is a design for a library in Irizel. But when I presented this, I did also put up this and say, this is what I really want to work on. This is an early uh, or previous design uh, for the framing for a curved roof structure. Oh, I did want to mention this. This is StuccoFlex. And um, it, oops, it can create a, a uh, air channel. Um, 
this woven uh, vinyl material. Um, can create an air channel that would go between the plywood triangles and the hard mache. See, this is, stuff is quite hard. And uh, would allow for movement of water vapor up to a vent at the top of the dome. Here's a uh, piece of mache with a, it's a mastic paint, waterproof paint on the top and then a smoothing layer of mache and a rougher uh, mache layer below that. So, it uh, gives some sense of what I'm trying to do with mache. And I'm just going to quickly show some images of SketchUp work that I've done um, with curved roofs. These are designs inspired by leaves, particularly like this maple leaf one. Um, this was a design uh, inspired by all the tomatoes at the end of one summer. So uh, this was an attempt to do a both a curved roof and a curved wall structure, and uh, that and we'll never do that again. Uh, these were some attempts to early attempts to work out the structure structures needed to actually build curved roof structure building. And then finally, just quickly some images of, uh, you know, what I'm aiming for in design, these curved roofs. Um, so I'm far away from being able to build these structures still, but um, it's just an interior shot. This is my goal. This is what I may mean for. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, I hope that'll just provide some context for um, the rest of what I show you. So, this is a small dome uh, that I built using irregular triangles. Uh, I use it for a kayak shed. It's, um, about three years old now. And uh, it's half inch plywood uh, covered with a mastic, sort of a rubbery paint, uh, which works pretty well, though, at the joints, as you can see. Um, I do get, uh, it does split, so I, I have to repaint it every, about every two years, I would say. Um, but it's very strong. As, um, as we were putting it up, we were first attempted to put it up at a higher height and actually fell over. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's it for this thing, um, as it was falling. But it, it kind of just uh, bounced almost, because I, th I think because of the PVC hubs, um, and let's just take a look underneath a bit so you can see the structure. Um, there's the hub, and uh, all I did is, is um, put screws through the from the inside um, of the hub into the end grain of the rafters. So, um, you know, really kind of quick and dirty work, but I was just more interested in, at this point in just the concept of making uh, making the structure, seeing if I could make it work, and uh, it does. And it's you know it's had a snow load uh, on it of it had some big storms. It had almost three feet of snow on it once, and it, and it didn't bother it at all. So this is um, an idea I'm working on still. I'm going to eventually do green roofs, vegetated roofs. And I'll need some material to hold the soil in place on a curved roof. And this is this is an experiment uh, to see uh, if I could make a material out of some common building supplies. And in this case, building supplies and wire ties. 
So <clears throat> this is actually a future experiment. I think next summer I may try to turn, move the, I'll move this to another location and uh, try to see if I can put a green roof on top of it. So that's one experiment. Oops. This is another experiment. This is an, uh, again a triangulated um, surface. Take a look underneath here so you can see that. Oh, this is a pretty messy, but uh, just so you see that it is in fact triangles. And then uh, covered with mache uh, to try to get a better curve. And uh, the, the waterproof coat is uh, roof mastic, and I think because the, the mache is fairly flexible, I think that the I won't have problems with cracking here. So um, there's about an inch of mache on top of the triangles. I'm still working out how to handle edges. Um, but I am starting to get the curves uh, that I'm aiming for with this. So this is a prototype of the curved wall and roof framing structure that I'm currently working with. Uh, these are one foot thick hempcrete walls with very good thermal performance. Um, the framing is three quarter inch plywood. Um, I showed you one of the hubs previously. Uh, that's a two inch dowel. There's a bigger piece of it that is attached to the top of the post with a, I think it's a 10 inch timber lock uh, screw. Um, so, and this is edge detailing, which I'll talk about more uh, when I show you this SketchUp model. Um, and I'll just go to this side, give you a slightly different view of it. Um, this is my first experiment with hempcrete, very interesting material. Uh, it actually, nails and screws can, um, you know, be driven into it and, and hold quite nicely. Um, let's see, um, those are, uh, as I said, the walls are 12 inches thick, so those window boxes are 12 inches deep, um, built right into the hempcrete, and, uh, just a shot of the footing here with some insulation in the middle uh, for a thermal break. This is a device measuring, or more accurately, a transfer device to transfer the triangular shape to a sheet of plywood um, so you can cut those triangles uh, easily. And uh, this, this building, this was actually extremely useful. I learned a lot from uh, from this prototype. I have a lot more to learn, but this really, building this uh, forced me to uh, investigate a lot of issues and really move my thinking along. So now we're going to move to um, my showing you the SketchUp model and um, um, your chance to ask any questions. So thanks for um, being patient with this uh, clearly quite amateurish video, um, but I hope that it gave, give, has given you some sense of, um, of what I've been working on for my practicum project. Thanks!